welcome to another module in this massive open online course and in this module let us start looking at another very important aspect in the whole of linear algebra and that is the concept of an eigenvalue and the eigenvalue decomposition. I think this is perhaps one of the most impactful and one of the most important concepts in the entire uh, domain of linear algebra and uh, matrix algebra, right. So, this concept of eigenvalue which is so fascinating and has so many applications probably one of the most central most I would say this is one of the most interesting plus highly significant because of the large number of applications of this right as one of the most interesting and highly impactful I would say right. And uh, this eigenvalue is also related to then the eigenvalue decomposition these are essentially more or less interlinked eigenvalue decomposition as in if you find the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors that gives the eigenvalue decomposition ok. So, which is also often you would see abbreviated as E V D popularly uh, sometimes in literature books and papers people call this as E V D that is the eigenvalue decomposition. And this is as I have told you I would like to explain this very clearly because this is one of the most important concepts that we are probably going to study in this entire course. Now, what is the concept of an eigenvalue? This is defined for a square matrix eigenvalue decomposition consider a square matrix consider a square matrix ok eigenvalues are defined only for square matrices that is one thing that is let us say we have a matrix A which is an n cross n matrix. Now, u bar is the eigenvector which is an n dimensional vector we call this an eigenvector if it satisfies the property that a u bar equals some lambda times u bar. So, we call u bar as the corresponding eigenvector and lambda as the corresponding eigenvalue. Alright, so u bar. So if you have square, when you have square matrix A, there is a vector u bar says that A times u bar is simply a scaled version of u bar. That is lambda, some scalar quantity lambda times u bar. So you can think of this as system input u bar. Output is simply it's not it it it's looks it's identical to u bar except that it is simply a scaled version. So you have the input to this system you can think of this as an input to the system this is the input u bar and output is scaled version of u bar scaled by lambda this is one way to think about this output is scaled version output is scaled version of u bar a u bar equals lambda times u bar. So, the vector u bar is known as the eigenvector and this quantity lambda is known as the eigenvalue of this square matrix of the square matrix A. Okay. So, this implies note that this can be simplified as follows A u bar equals lambda u bar this essentially implies let me write it in big font this essentially implies that A u bar minus lambda u bar equal to 0 and this essentially implies now you if you look at this which means a minus lambda i times u bar equal to 0 and now if you look at this 
uh, what does this mean? This means that this matrix, this is you look at this matrix, this has a non-trivial null space, right? U bar is not 0, this has a non-trivial null space. Remember that is the concept that we have seen. This has a non-trivial null space. It's a singular matrix. A minus lambda u bar equal to zero. It's a singular matrix. This means that A minus lambda i is a singular matrix. And this essentially implies that the determinant of A minus lambda i equal to 0. This essentially implies that the determinant of a minus lambda i equal to 0 and in fact now therefore, the lambdas can be found as the solution to this equation that is the determinant of a minus lambda i. Remember this is the determinant. and the lambdas can be found as a solution of this equation and this equation is termed as so solving this yields the solving this equation yields the eigenvalues So, solving this equation yields the eigenvalues, very good. Solving this equation yields the eigenvalues and um, this equation is known as the characteristic equation. That is, if you look at this determinant of a minus lambda equal to 0, this is known as the characteristic. this is known as the characteristic equation corresponding to the matrix. Let us look at a simple example, example. So, I hope you have been able to follow what we are saying so far. You have the square matrix A, A u bar equal to lambda u bar. If there is a vector u bar that satisfies this, that is the output is a scaled version of the input. U bar is the eigenvector, lambda is the corresponding eigenvalue and the eigenvalues can be found as the solution of the characteristic equation which is given by determinant a minus lambda i equal to 0. Let us look at a simple equation, let us look at a simple example to understand this. For instance, let us look at the example a equal to 2 comma 2, 3 comma 1 and uh, now what is a minus lambda i? a minus lambda times identity of course, I have to take the identity of the same size as a. So, a is 2 cross 2 which means i will also be 2 cross 2. So, you have a minus lambda i. So, you have 2 2 3 1 minus lambda one zero zero one which is essentially now you take this, this is essentially going to be 2 minus lambda 1 minus lambda 3 2 that is a minus lambda i. Now, the determinant of a minus lambda i that is essentially determinant of 2 minus lambda. 1 minus lambda 3 2 this is essentially equal to 2 minus lambda into 1 minus lambda minus 6. Now, we have to set this equal to 0 remember this set this equal to 0 this implies essentially that 2 minus lambda into 1 minus lambda minus 6 equal to 0. This implies that 2 minus 3 lambda plus lambda square minus 6 this is equal to 0. This implies that lambda square minus 3 lambda minus 4 equal to 0. This implies lambda minus 4 
this essentially implies lambda minus 4 into lambda plus 1 equal to 0. This implies that lambda equal to 4 comma minus 1. So, this is essentially what this implies. So, this is essentially what this implies. So, these are the eigenvalues lambda equal to 4, lambda equal to minus 1. So, you have a quadratic equation solving that yields the two eigenvalues. Very good. Now, to find the eigenvectors, remember we have to solve Remember eigenvectors satisfy the equation a minus lambda i times u bar equal to 0. That is if you look at the eigenvector u bar that lies in the null space of the matrix a minus lambda i where lambda is the corresponding eigenvalue. So, the u bar lies in the null space of a minus lambda i. So, u bar lies in the null space of a minus lambda i. Now, let us take this a minus lambda i set us set lambda equal to 4. So, that will be your, your 2 comma 2 2 and 3 1 minus lambda times i or minus 4 times 1 0 0 1 which if you look at this now this is essentially you will have minus 2 3 2 minus 2 3 2 minus 3. Now, we set a minus lambda u bar equal to 0. So, a minus lambda i times u bar equal to 0. This implies that if I substitute this matrix minus 2 3 2 minus 3 u bar u 1 u 2 equal to 0. This implies you will see minus 2 u 1 plus 3 u 2 equal to 0, 2 u 1 minus 3 u 2 equal to 0. Remember look, look at this, this is basically the first equation scaled by minus 1 gives you the second equation and this is also always a characteristic of when you try to solve the null space, there will always be a free variable, right. So, in this case I can only, I only have effectively one equation 2 u 1 minus 3 u 2 equal to 0 which means u 1 equals 3 u 2 by 2 set u 2 equal to 2, this implies u 1 equals 3. So, I get one of the vector is u bar equals u 1 comma u 2 that is 3 comma 2. In fact, you can see this is not unique. If I set u 2 equal to, in fact, if I set u 2 equal to 1, I will get u 1 equal to 3 by 2, right. So, the eigenvector you can see this is an interesting property of the eigenvector. Eigenvector is independent of uh, a scaling parameter, right. If you scale it by a constant alpha, it will still be an eigenvector because if you look at the property of the eigenvector a x bar or a u bar equal to lambda u bar, a u bar equal to lambda u bar. If I scale it by alpha, a into alpha times u bar equal to alpha times a u bar, which is alpha times lambda u bar which is essentially lambda alpha times u bar ok. So, if you scale a vector, so this is uh, scaling does not impact eigenvector. So, alpha u bar, u bar is an eigenvector implies alpha u bar is also an eigenvector right corresponding to the same eigenvalue is also is also 
u bar is an eigen vector implies alpha u bar is also an eigen vector so in fact 3 by 3 comma 2 will be an eigen vector if you scale it multiply it both by 2 so 6 comma 4 will also be an eigen vector so on and so forth right so scaling does not scaling by any constant alpha does not impact it so it will still be an eigen vector corresponding to um, the eigen value lambda and therefore you will see that there is a free variable all right i can choose u2 and u1 can be determined appropriately or in this case i can also choose u1 and u2 will be determined appropriately and now we can do a quick check for instance let us multiply this eigen vector by this matrix 2 2 3 1 this is our matrix a multiplied by this 3 2 which is u bar that gives you essentially 2 into 3 6 6 plus 6 12 and 2 into 3 6 6 plus 2 8 which is nothing but 4 times your vector 3 comma 2 4 is nothing but recognize this is your lambda and this is your u bar so you have very much satisfies the equation a u bar equals lambda u bar so that is very interesting now the other eigenvalue similarly you can solve this we already solved it we know the other eigenvalue is equal to minus 1 similarly lambda equal to minus 1 eigenvector u bar this is given as 1 comma eigenvector u bar this is given as 1 comma minus 1 and you have a u bar equals 2 2 3 1 1 comma minus 1 uh, which you can see is essentially just to check this this is essentially equal to 2 into 1 minus 3 so this will be minus 1 uh, and 2 minus 1 so this is 1 which is essentially minus 1 comma 1 minus 1 and this once again you can see this is basically your lambda and this is your vector u bar a u bar equal to lambda u bar so again corresponding to the eigen vector corresponding to the eigen vector 1 comma or uh, corresponding to the eigen vector 1 comma minus 1 we have the eigen value minus 1 and of course if 1 comma minus 1 is an eigen vector 2 comma minus 2 is also an eigen vector 3 comma minus 3 is also an eigen vector in fact for that matter multiplied by minus 3 minus 3 comma 3 is also an eigen vector all right so it's independent of scaling okay now let us look at the eigenvalue decomposition okay consider the n cross n matrix a consider the n cross n matrix a now note that a minus lambda equal to 0 note that this has this is an equation of degree n this is an equation of degree n this implies generally this has n roots uh, this has n roots let us assume this has n distinct roots i will just make it a little simple the general theory is a little complicated so let n this because we are not interested in going into remember this is not a course on pure linear algebra rate people uh, can talk i mean the eigen value and eigen value decomposition is such such a such an important and such a vast area that people can spend uh, lectures and lectures talking about it. So, we want to simplify our discussion. So, let us consider a simple scenario where this uh, characteristic equation which is an nth degree polynomial has n distinct roots and you have the eigenvectors corresponding to n distinct roots that's ma that makes our discussion simple. So, in that case once you have these eigenvectors now let us let us say u1 bar u2 bar so on u1 bar these denote the eigenvectors and uh, lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda n denote the n distinct eigenvalues 
because remember the characteristic equation has distinct roots. So, these are the distinct these are the distinct eigenvalues. Then you have you are going to have remember the eigenvalue you satisfy a u 1 bar eigenvector satisfy a u 1 bar equals lambda u 1 bar a 2 bar equals lambda u 2 bar and a u n bar equals lambda u n bar. Now, if I put these stack these together, put these together concatenate this as one big matrix. Remember A u 1 bar A u 2 bar A u n bar, I can put these things together uh, as let me just write this a little bit more clearly. I can write this as uh, a u 1 bar, a u 2 bar, these are the n columns. This is equal to lambda u 1 bar, lambda u 2 bar, lambda u n bar. And now, if I pull a out on the left, I can write this as a times the matrix containing the vectors u 1 bar, u 2 bar until u n bar. This is equal to the diagonal matrix, the diagonal matrix. So, this is equal to u 1 bar, u 2 bar, u n bar times what is here is the diagonal matrix lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda n and you can see this holds that is this is nothing but lambda 1 u 1 bar lambda 2 u 2 bar lambda n u 1 bar. So, I can this is a times if I now call this as the matrix u which is essentially an n cross n matrix. This is the n cross n matrix of eigenvectors. This is also u. Now, this is an interesting matrix this is lambda which is essentially you can see this is the diagonal matrix containing the eigenvalues. This is important, this is the diagonal matrix of eigenvalues. This is the diagonal matrix of eigenvalues, then you have and this u is the n cross n matrix. So, this is also n cross n, this is a diagonal matrix and this u is the n cross n matrix of eigenvectors right. This is the n cross n matrix of eigenvectors then what we have shown is that you have a u equals u times lambda where lambda is the diagonal matrix of eigenvalues and this essentially now take u to the right that is uh, you can show that u is invertible and uh, as I have said we are not uh, let us assume that u is invertible as, as I said we are not going to go into the final details of this that is when is u going to be invertible and so on. And then you can write that a equal to u lambda u inverse and this is known as the eigenvalue decomposition. This is essentially known as the eigenvalue decomposition. This interesting thing is known as the eigenvalue decomposition and this is something that is very interesting which is essentially you have the you have we are writing this as let me just write this with a very big font because this is something that is going to be a equal to u lambda u inverse right this is something that is very very interesting and this is what we are calling as the uh, this is what we are calling as the this is what we are calling as the eigenvalue decomposition.
this is essentially something that is very interesting and uh, so this is your u which is the n cross n matrix of eigenvectors and the most interesting matrix is this lambda which is the diagonal matrix of this is the diagonal this is what is interesting the diagonal matrix of eigenvalues. So, this lambda is essentially a diagonal and this is something that is very very fundamental and you will see this everywhere uh, wherever you have applications of matrices such as signal processing. Uh, uh, machine learning, data analysis and so on and so forth. This applications are huge and applications, this is wide variety of applications that is the property of eigen, the principle of eigenvalues and this eigenvalue decomposition has applications, it is ubiquitous, it has applications everywhere from big data to signal processing to machine learning applications are everywhere and this is one of the most important components, uh, one of the most important. I would say decompositions and one of the most important concepts that the square matrix A can be written as A u lambda u inverse where u is the matrix of eigenvectors and lambda is the diagonal matrix of eigenvalues. Excellent. Let us look at a simple example. We have uh, A, let us go back to our matrix before we have A equal to 2, 2, 3, 1 this is I am sorry 2, 2, 3, 1. This is our matrix. We have the eigenvalues lambda 1 equal to 4, lambda 2 equal to minus 1 and corresponding to these we have the eigenvectors u1 bar, u1 bar equal to 3 comma 2 u2 bar equal to 1 comma minus 1. Therefore, you can form the matrix U which is the matrix of eigenvectors which will be 3 comma 2 and you will have 1 comma 1 comma minus 1 and um, the diagonal matrix of eigenvalues lambda that we are talking about you have to write the eigen all you have to do is you have to write the diagonal matrix the, the eigenvalues uh, in uh, uh, on the diagonal so 4 comma minus 1. Now the other interesting thing about this is if you look at this we have arranged the eigenvalues in a decreasing order of magnitude right we have the eigenvalues 4 and minus 1. Right. So, we have arranged the eigenvalues in decreasing order of magnitude, although it is not very important. In fact, eigenvalue decomposition you can write the eigenvalues of in any particular in any order, but it is uh, usually very useful. You will see realize that in many applications, if you write the eigenvalues in the decreasing order of magnitude, that has some significance as we are going to see later. Okay. So, we are writing the eigenvalues in decreasing order of magnitude. We can also say that is a convention, right? Eigenvalues. in decreasing order of magnitude. Right, again values in decreasing order of magnitude and now therefore, we have the property. Now, let us calculate u, we have already u inverse. So, we have seen u equals well, what is u? u equals 3, 2, 1, minus 1. So, u inverse, remember this is a 2 cross 2 matrix. So, 1 over the determinant minus 3 minus 2, that is minus 5. Swap the diagonal elements, 2 cross 2 matrix inverse, you swap the diagonal elements minus 1 comma 3 and negative of the off diagonal elements, negative of the off diagonal elements, so minus 1, minus 2. And now, if you take the negative in front of the minus 5 inside, so this becomes 1 over 5, 1, 1, 2, minus 3. And therefore, now you have 
फाइनली ए इक्वल टू यू लैमडा यू इनवर्स विच इज एसेंशियल यू टेक द कॉन्स्टेंट वन ओवर फाइव आउट साइड यू टेक द कॉन्स्टेंट वन ओवर फाइव आउट साइड यू कैन राइट दिस एज फर्स्ट इज यू दैट इज एसेंशियल योर थ्री टू वन माइनस वन द डायगनल मेट्रिक्स ऑफ आइगन वैल्यूज दैट इज योर फोर जीरो जीरो माइनस वन times u inverse we remember we have already taken this 1 by 5 outside so that is 1 1 2 minus 3 and you can multiply it out and you can ensure that you get the original matrix which is a which is essentially your remember your 2 2 3 1 this is your original matrix a you can multiply this so verify this right so my suggestion to you is verify this multiply it out verify this and uh, you can see so this is basically u one uh, lambda of course u inverse will have the 1.1 over 5 over here and uh, this is essentially the diagonal matrix of eigen values this is your diagonal matrix this is essentially your diagonal matrix of eigen values and this is the eigen value decomposition which has several several applications and which i have already said alluded to at the beginning of this module that this is easily probably one of the most important concepts in the entire linear algebra so please i hope you paid attention please go over this if you have not understood anything clearly and understand this completely and assimilate this concept because this has several applications tremendous applications all right so with that let us stop here and let us continue this discussion in the subsequent modules thank you